Welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 94 of ASP.NET video series. This is continuation to part 93. If you haven't watched that, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. In this session, we'll discuss about unlocking the locked user accounts. In part 93 of this video series, we discussed about locking user accounts if a user repeatedly enters the wrong password. The accounts are basically locked to prevent hackers from guessing passwords and making dictionary attacks. First, get, let's get the account locked and then we'll discuss about the different approaches that we have to unlock the locked user accounts. So if you remember, this is the application that we're working with in part 93. And there's a table within the database, TBL users, uh, and then this is locked flag in this table determines whether the account is locked or not. At the moment, this account is not locked. So let's go ahead and enter uh, an invalid username and password three times. So I entered a wrong password the first time. I have three attempts left, two attempts left, one attempt left. Now the account is locked. So obviously, if we go back to the table, look at that, the account is locked. And that's the locked date and time. Okay. Now after this, even if I enter a correct username and password, I will not be able to log in because my account is currently locked. So I need to get this account unlocked. Okay. So obviously, to unlock the accounts, there are different approaches that different organizations follow. It depends on the organization's policy and, and things like that. So one of the easiest approaches whenever the account is locked, the end user calls the technical help desk. The authorized person at the technical help desk will authenticate the user by asking him a simple few questions to make sure that he's that he is the owner of the account. And after that, the authorized person can issue a simple update query like this. So update TBL users. What is this query doing? It's simply updating is locked to zero, retry attempts to null, and lock the date and time to null. Basically, this update query uh, will unlock the user account. But however, look at this. This is a manual query. The person is running this query manually. So obviously, there are risks when we run queries, you know, manually against a production database. First of all, it's not rec uh, recommended because it is error prone and we may unintentionally modify other rules that we did, that we did not intend to update. Uh, just imagine what could happen if you forget to use this where clause because this is being made by a person uh, you know, on the production database on an ad hoc basis. So it's not recommended to do that. Okay, so that's approach one, but still some organizations follow that. Another approach would be to provide a web page that lists all the locked user accounts. Okay, so we'll have a web form which lists all the user accounts uh, that are locked, and then on that web form, maybe we'll have uh, you know a button called enable against every locked user account, and the help desk person can just click that unlock button, and the account will be locked. Uh, you know, basically unlocked. Uh, this is not error prone because there is an application page which is doing that. Uh, the uh, the authorized person is not writing the query manually, so so that human element of error is not there. But however, this is still a manual process because the person has to unlock uh, each account. Okay, depending on how big the application and how many how many users you have, there might be many calls, and you may require uh, more people to unlock the account. So this could be inefficient. Okay, but from an implementation perspective, if you know how to write basic ADO.NET code, you know this approach should not be very difficult to achieve. Just in case, if you are unsure on how to do this, leave a comment on this video. I will I will get a video recorded on on how to do that when I get some time. Okay, but in this session, we're going to discuss about approach three. Okay, which is more efficient and which is automated. Uh, so basically, what we are going to do in this approach three is we're going to create a SQL Server job. This job will, will check this TBL users table periodically for the locked user account. So it's going to scan this table every 30 minutes maybe. And then it figures out, okay, if the account is locked, let's say for example, for more than 24 hours, it will automatically unlock the account. Okay, so let's see how to do that. Now again, the SQL Server job, you know, the frequency at which the job is going to run, it's configurable. Now I'm saying it's going to run every 30 minutes. But the organization policy states, okay, instead of making the job run every 30 seconds, run it every five minutes because we don't want uh, the user's accounts to be locked after 24 hours. Okay, again, 
at what point do we actually want to unlock the user accounts? That's also up to the organization. For example, let's say we have locked a user account and after that account is locked, how long do we actually want to keep it locked? Is it 10 hours, 20 hours, 24 hours? Some organization states 24 hours, some organizations 48 hours. And and that is to you know prevent hackers from making repeated attempts to break into the system. Okay, so basically, uh, some organizations say 24 hours, some organizations 48 hours. For this demonstration purposes, let's stick to 24 hours, and we want to have this job running every 30 minutes. Let's see how to do that. Okay, so first, we want an update query. Okay, let's get rid of this one. So I have an update query. So this update query we will use as part of the job. Let's let me uncomment this. So it's a pretty simple update query. Now what we basically want to do is um, we want to check this table and any account that is locked for more than 24 hours should be automatically unlocked by this job. Okay, so this is just an update statement. So what is this update statement doing? It's updating, you know, retry attempts to null, is locked to zero and lock date and time to null. Okay, but then there is a, a where clause where is locked is equal to one. So the account should be locked. And then there is another, this is the important condition. So this is what is checking if 24 hours have elapsed since the account is locked. So what are we using for that? We're using a date diff function. Now, if you're new to date diff function, we have discussed about date difference in SQL Server video series. I will have a link to that video um, if you're new to it. So watch that. I'm not going to cover the specifics of this function here. So basically, this date diff function is looking at this particular um, column locked the date and time and it's comparing the difference between when the account is locked and the current date and time when this up update query is executed. If that difference in hours is greater than 24, go ahead and update that. Okay, so it's as simple as that. Okay, all right. So now instead of running this query manually every time, what we want to do is we want to schedule this as part of a job. We want to create a SQL Server job. Okay, so to create a SQL Server job, open SQL Server Management Studio and within Object Explorer, you should see something called SQL Server Agent. If the SQL Server Agent is not running, right click on that and click Start. So since I have the SQL Server Agent already running, Start is disabled. Okay, but if it's not running on your machine, it, it would be enabled to click. So click that after SQL Server Agent is jo uh, started. Let's go ahead and create a job. Okay, now you can create a job if SQL Server Agent is not started, but the jobs will not run. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a job here. So I want to create a new job. So on this new job, give it a meaningful name for this job. So what is this job going to do? This job is going to unlock user accounts. So that's what I'm going to name this, unlock user accounts. And I'm going, you know, the owner is whoever you have here. And category, again, choose a meaningful category or leave it to the default. Give it a meaningful description. And the most important thing is make sure this enabled checkbox is checked. Otherwise, your job will be disabled and it will not run. And then the steps. This is the next important you know, step in creating a job. So what do you want your job to do? What are the steps in that job? So click on this new button to add a job step, which should bring up a new job step dialog box. In this job step, give a meaningful name to your step. So what what is this step going to do? It's going to execute this update query. So I'm going to name that so execute update query. Okay. And what is the step type? Is it a transact SQL script or is it some kind of PowerShell script or is it a replication task, you know, or is it a SQL server integration, uh, you know, package? Uh, there are several things, but it's a simple T-SQL script. So I'm going to select that. Run as, you can leave that blank. And what's the database? Now, our table is actually within TBL users is in sample database. And I want this job to run against that table in that database. So I'm going to choose sample database and then paste your update query here. So I'm going to copy this and paste it there. Okay, so that's the command. Click OK. 
So we are done with the steps. And the next most important thing is the schedules. So how often do you want this job to run automatically? Where do we define that on the schedules page? So click on new, we are on the schedules page. So give a meaningful name to the job schedule. So this job is going to run every 30 minutes on a daily basis. So every 30 minutes daily. Schedule type, it's recurring. It's not a one-time job. It's recurring job and it's enabled and occurs. When does it occur? It occurs daily and reoccurs every one day. So on a daily basis, this is going to happen. And it occurs every, I'm going to say every 30 minutes starting at this time and ending at this time. So round the clock, it's going to occur every 30 minutes. Okay, start date is today and there is no end date that I can see. You know, we want to run this uh, forever. Okay, so I click OK. We are done. So we created, uh, you know, the name and all that on the general. Next, the steps and the schedules. We can also configure alerts and notifications. We'll talk about them in a later video session. They're not relevant for this demo. So I'm going to click OK. So that should create a job here. Within SQL Server Agent Jobs, look at that unlock user account. Now let's go ahead and see if the job has run. Now at the moment, you know, we have scheduled it to run every 30 minutes. So we cannot wait for 30 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the schedule basically to run it to run for every minute uh, for the time being. Um, let's go there. So schedules, that's the one which I want to edit. Let's click that. I want this to run every one minute. So let me click OK, click OK. And now the job should run every minute. Uh, so if we wait for a minute, the job is going to automatically run. But then this record will not be updated. Why? Because it's not greater than 24 hours. Look at this. If I run this update query, zero rows affected. Why? Because this account is just locked. So until tomorrow, this time it's not going to get unlocked. So let's go ahead and change the time, the date and time, the locked date and time manually. So update. So that's the table we want to update. TBL users set locked date time is equal to, let's copy and paste that and change it to yesterday or day before yesterday so that it gets uh, unlocked immediately when the job runs. Okay, so let me update that there's only one row, so I'm not using the where clause. So let me execute that and let's select now. Look at that. It's day before yesterday. So it's definitely greater than 24 hours. So if we wait for the next one minute, you know, it, the job will pick that up any minute and then, uh, you know, basically unlock that. It will set retry attempts to null is locked to zero and lock the date and time to null. Okay, look at that. It has gone. So we did not do the update manually. Now this job is going to run every one minute now because we configured it to run but in production we don't have to run it every one minute maybe every 15 or half an hour so if you look at this job right now uh, right click on the job and say view history it will show you when all this job has run look at that it has run once at 34 you know 2034 and 2035 one so it's going to run every one minute okay on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.